In this lecture, we're going to talk about how to create a stadium pitch or core story. In his excellent book, The Ultimate Sales Machine, Chet Holmes describes how businesses should create what he calls a stadium pitch. The idea is that if I could fill a stadium with your ideal target market, your ideal customers, and you had just a short time, maybe a minute or so, to convince them to do business with you, what would you say? The idea is to craft a short, persuasive narrative about your business. You want to start with a good title and keep your stadium pitch uh, with their, uh, the audience on the edge of their seats. So let's talk about some good titles and some bad titles. Now, for the purposes of the example, I'm going to use a, a pest control business as the example. So let's say the pest control's ideal target market, as identified in the previous lectures, was uh, a group of hotel or motel owners in Toronto, Canada. So here's a, a sample title that they could use. This would be a bad title to use. I'm here to tell you about why our pest control is the best anywhere. Now this is a terrible example because it really only appeals to people who are ready to buy right now. As it turns out, that's only 3% of your audience. The next 3 to 6% are people that are thinking about it but not quite ready to buy yet. And the remaining 90% of the audience kind of fall equally into three buckets. One of they're open to the idea but not buying right now. They're not interested in it or in varying degrees of not interested at all. And if they had a title like that, they would tune you right out. Wouldn't it be better if we could craft a message that would appeal to the entire stadium instead of just that 3% that are ready to buy right now? The key, according to Chet Holmes, is to change your pitch into what he calls education-based marketing. So let's change that title a little bit and make it into something where we're teaching or educating the group. So instead of that title, we'll, we'll use a different title. Let's try the top five reasons hotels in Toronto are under-occupied. Now a title like this is going to get the attention of everyone in the stadium, whether they're in the market for pest control or not. Now the message may include items other than pest control, but it will include at least two to three of the points that are related to pest control that you'll get from your uh, unique selling proposition that we did in the previous lecture. Perhaps pest issues cause costly interruptive fumigation and customer complaints and pests that spread before they're caught. Perhaps the pitch could include stats showing that hotels that spray regularly for pests as a preventative measure have less complaints and less overall problems, less downtime in their rooms. With this stadium pitch, you're educating your target audience and you're giving them facts about the problems that face their business. By the time you're finished your stadium pitch, the client will feel an urgency to take care of the pest issues. That's the 3% that are ready to buy. But also, the rest of them might take action for preventative maintenance and inspections so that their operations are not interrupted. Note that at no time have you been doing the traditional hard sell to your audience. Once you establish yourself as an expert in the field with all of this education you've been giving, people will naturally uh, flock to you and, and deliver their business to you. Now, you'll need to do some real research to get accurate, solid information to give away to your prospective clients, but this information will drive sales for sure. Now, how do we communicate this core story? We've got a title now, and we maybe have done a little bit of research, but we need to really communicate the story. Now, since your story since your core story reaches a much larger percent of your target audience than just that 3%, you really should be using this in all of your communication channels, uh, in person, on your print material, and especially online. So let's talk about how you can write and craft that script that's going to end up being your core story. There's a common sales copy technique called ADA, A-I-D-A, which can be used when crafting your written material. Each section of ADA is a method as designed to get the reader to continue on to the next section. 
Now, this technique can be used in emails or online, and specifically with emails, they actually don't need to look that pretty. As a matter of fact, and it's almost counterintuitive, but emails that look too pretty, too fine, you know, designed well and, and really nice looking, actually can get rejected more often than emails that look like they were just handwritten because people will assume that they're sales uh, written by the corporate gods and are more likely to ignore them. So let's take a look at the first letter, A. A is for attention. What you want to do here is use your core story title to get their attention. The I is for interest. Now each of the points will be the interest pieces. You may have three points in the example that we're using with um, the pest control company, the three ways or the three top reasons that hotels in Toronto are underoccupied. So each of those three points would be the interest pieces and they need to be compelling and written in language that is, again, suitable for your target audience. You want to make sure you're using hard facts and stats to educate and build rapport. Now, some of your pieces will be using your unique selling proposition. So you have to make sure that at least one or two of your points are hammering kind of the, the points that you want to make in your unique selling proposition. But make sure that everything is backed up with data and stats. Remember, your, your purpose here is to educate people not sell them. The next letter is D for desire. Now by now you've done a good job with your core story and the client already has some kind of desire, they just don't know what to do with it. You want to briefly mention that this material is provided by the experts at your business and don't talk too much about your business though. Let the material in the interest and, interest and attention sections convince the reader of your expertise. Finally, in the action section, you want to invite the reader to connect with you either at your storefront or by an appointment or however it is that you do business. Make the call to action brief and clear. Again, don't talk about your business too much. This is not a hard sell. You're educating your people. Let the above sections convince them that they need to meet with you. Now, putting together an effective core story can take some time, but again, don't get stalled on this step. Stop now and do some research. Put together a compelling story for your ideal market and write it out. Once you've done that, and that may take a while, it might take a day or two. Since we're also going to be using social media heavily in this course, which favors short pieces um, that are kind of blasts, what you want to do is take some key pieces out of your core story once you've got it completed and prepare short little messages that you can put on Twitter Twitter's 140 character limit and on Facebook. Facebook you can have longer posts but you still want to keep it short. Now we'll use your entire core story on your web presence which is coming up next.